Hey everyone, hope everyone's doing good. I'm gonna put out a video today. Been wanting to do this for a little while, but I'm finally gonna do it today. I'm gonna to go through everything on this Rima sawmill that has either broken or been banged up or failed or that I got a problem with or an issue with. I've now had this sawmill for over two years, so I feel comfortable going through, just giving my kind of like my final full opinion on this machine. So let's go ahead and get started on it. First and foremost, we're gonna talk about the metal. So the thickness, the gauge of the metal, we're talking the bumps, we're talking the rails, we're talking everything. How's the thickness of the metal? Is it sufficient? So here's what I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna be honest with you. The metal is good. Is it great? No. Can you easily bend it? Yes. So if you look at my bunks, you're gonna, you're always gonna see like cupping or indention in the tops of these bunks. That's just, that's gonna happen. Is that a big deal? No, because as long as these edges here are level, that's okay. But these are gonna get banged up. You're gonna see stuff like this. Now, could this possibly start to affect your level? Yes, you need to kind of keep an eye on it. But small minor dings, like even the ones that you're seeing on my mill, I'm still cutting nice level boards off of this, okay? Now, there has been times where I've dropped a log on there, something's happened. This was also before I had uh, both sets of feet underneath of it. This is a stationary floor model. Uh, trailer models, I've heard things about them too. You gotta be careful. If you look at the weight limits on these, it's not as much as you might think. Maybe a dry pine log or a, a dry log of a certain species is excellent, is great, will work just fine. But a big, heavy, fresh cut oak log or a hickory log that's very heavy, you gotta be careful. There are things online that can help you to try to estimate what you, your log may weigh. And there are specifications for this machine. So take a look at those. Keep in mind, once again, my machine's two years old. Rima does make modifications from time to time. So take a good look at the machine. Make sure you're getting updated information. Before we go any farther, uh, if you're wanting to buy specifically from Rima, and keep in mind, Rima makes a lot of sawmills. It doesn't have to be orange with little bobcats on it here. It, they, I've seen them green, I've seen them blue, I've seen people's own logos on them. So a lot of people sell models that are very close to this, but it's made by a company called Rima. And you can see their website there. I'm not affiliated with them. I purchase directly from them. I just want to tell you, be on top of things. And the best thing I, advice I can give you is go to Rima Sawmills and Cranes on Facebook and have those people that are on that group set you up and find somebody with the company. That's the best advice I can give you. You'll have a lot less stress because you'll know you'll be working with an agent from Rima that will get back to you, okay? So I'm throwing that out there. Continuing on. So the metal, the framing, I didn't get both feet, sets of feet. I only got one or the other feet when I first got this. So pay attention to your weight, your weight because this metal, although I said it's good, like I said, this is, I would not say great because it could be better. It could be a little thicker steel so that it can hold more weight. Next, let's talk about the stickers here. Now, I would really hope that they've changed this design by now because this is just, you know, engineering and design flaw. But you see, you know, and I've talked about this before, I'm not gonna spend too, too much time on it. But the simple thing is, is over time, when you try to clamp down your log, these lobes will slip past each other like this. They will slide past each other and it, it's very frustrating. You can see how worn out that lobe is already. So you, they really either need spacers there or maybe you know the twist kind. I don't know, but it kind of needs a redesign on this clamp. I do not like that. Um, the next thing that I will say is that I don't like that it didn't come with any type of uh, like a, a lock ring, a lock washer. So I've, I've went around and tightened these real good and I've put, I've put some like Loctite on it. I've in certain places I've even put in uh, lock washers because the vi the bolts want to vibrate loose. So my advice on that is either really uh, tighten them down or use something to help uh, keep them on there because they seem to want to vibrate loose. Not a big deal. Moving on, 
Uh, if you want to know about like how often do you replace bearings and stuff like that, this is my honest opinion. If you store it inside, you're going to be golden. You'll probably last a lot longer, especially if you're you know doing regular maintenance and checking on it. You're probably going to have really good luck with it. I have not had to change my wheel bearings in two years. I have not had to change my clutch in two years. The guide bearings down here, there's two of them. You will change those all the time. So just get used to that. Um, you may find a nicer bearing aftermarket, but they will go out all the time. The blades, it's better to find aftermarket blades than buy them from Rima. Something like Jerry's ReSharp, that's where I go. But depending on where you live, you'll just have to kind of look around and find. Uh, my advice is measure your blade to know your exact blade length. You can't always trust the instructions or even the nameplate. Mine is actually wrong. Uh, the belt, my advice is check your belt when you first get your machine. Uh, do not buy extra belts from Rima. Find it, same thing, measure your belt. Find the information out about the belt. They, they could slightly vary. Trust me, I knew nothing about it when I started and I was able to figure it out. Uh, but I have had to replace the belt. This is basically the only belt I've put on it. The belt that it came with, I think was kind of, probably needed to be switched right off the bat. So like I said, keep an eye on that. I've heard that they put a, uh, so you know what the tension is, the torque is. I've heard that they put a, a, a gauge on there, but double check. Make sure it's not like an upsell or an upcharge feature. Make sure you're getting, because you want to know what the tension is on your blade. I have to guess it goes with a, you know, after a while you will get a feel for it. I'm not saying you won't, but a person that's just starting to saw, it's a little dangerous not knowing what your tension is. Okay. Uh, also find out if it's got the, this is an adjustable blade guide on here. Mine came with it. I've heard people say they didn't get their blade guide with it. Make sure you're getting the adjustable blade guide. It's nice to have. I don't know why you wouldn't want to have it, but I mean, maybe you don't just saying I would have it. So back here in the back, hopping over here, I got the upgraded motor. I would recommend getting it. Uh, but that's totally up to you. The Life Fan, however you pronounce that, is their stock motor. If you want that, that's fine. I've had no problems starting it, no problems with it running. Great fuel efficiency. Only thing that's happened is one time when I went to pull it, it hit it right on a compression stroke, got out of my hand, busted off some plastic on a cold day. But it's not really even cheap plastic. It's a nice made uh, machine. It is a Chinese made engine. Uh, don't let the name fool you. Yes, some of these are made in the United States, but this particular one is not, but it's still a great engine. The emergency stop button broke as I predicted it would. Very cheap and flimsy, not a big deal, but it's something that happened to me. The cart itself, and I'm sorry, I'm going through things quickly. I'm looking at the timer here and I don't wanna make this too long of a video. The, the machine itself, has a little bit of a vibration. The higher you run that head up when you're cutting, the more vibration. Depends on the wood you're cutting too. Depends on the sharpness of the blade. But in my professional opinion, after using this for two years, I think it has a little bit of a vibration. I don't know what they can do to uh, alleviate that or make it better. But for me, it has not been a big issue. It's just something that I noticed. Uh, other than that, I'm looking around now just trying to make sure that there's nothing else I want to point out. Uh, going back to the metal, I, I did break off one of the back stops very early on. Nothing like that ever happened again. Uh, other than that, I can't think of anything major that's happened with it. You just, there's a lot of people selling mills right now, so I don't know how much the market is really out there for sawmills anymore. I noticed in, uh, it, it does look like there is some interest in sawmills and in getting into milling, but I'm also seeing a lot more people selling their sawmills, even on just locally on Marketplace, I'm seeing people that are getting out of it. So just another thing, you know, just throwing it out there, make sure you have a plan for your machine. If you're wanting to buy this because you think you're gonna get rich off of some wood or something, just check everything out. If you have free wood available to you and you have a good market, yeah, there's an opportunity to make some money. But if you're gonna spend, you know, four or five, six grand on a machine and you're only making like 20, 40 bucks a week selling a little slab here and a little, I mean, you're gonna end up having to sell the machine. I'd hate to see that. If you're wanting to buy a sawmill so you can make your own boards, 
to you know build a greenhouse or to build a, a shed or to build a barn or to build a house, you know whatever, and then you can sell it afterwards. I think that's still a great idea too. So there's still a, a market I think for sawmills. So I think there's still is some interest. So I want to put this video out. If anyone has any questions, feel free to drop them below. But like I said, the most important resource you could have is that Facebook group. Uh, I'm not really affiliated with it at all, but I, I'm just throwing it out there. That is a valuable resource. So with that, I hope everyone has a good day. I want to throw in one more thing before I go, though. I was able to drive a little bit in the Bobcat T770, if anyone's still watching. And I loved riding it. So I've only got to spend about 20 hours in it so far, maybe 12 to 20 hours. But uh, yeah, it's a much nicer machine. So with that, hope everyone has a good day and I'll talk to everyone later.